Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so very excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Christy and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Illinois. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, the University of Vermont. Thank you so much, Christy, and welcome everyone. Um, we are so thrilled that you all are here this evening. Um, and as Christy said, my name is Ashley Brown and I am here on behalf of the University of Vermont. Uh, so excited to be here tonight. Um, so to get started, the University of Vermont has about 10,000 undergraduate students. We are located about 14 hours away from the Chicagoland area. That is if you're driving, if you're flying, um, it's about a um, two hour flight directly out of O'Hare. So in terms of accessibility, it's really easy to get to the University of Vermont from the Illinois area. We also offer 100 different majors at UVM. So um, some of our more popular programs include business, psychology, environmental studies and sciences, in addition to the health sciences as well. But we also have some really unique majors that include food systems, linguistics, and parks, recreation, and tourism. Some of our distinctive qualities about the University of Vermont can on the surface seem a little bit contradictory. So for example, the University of Vermont is very old. Uh, we were founded in 1791 and we are the fifth oldest institution in the New England area after Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth and Brown. But we're also really new in the fact of constantly keeping pace with the changing world around us and just being cognizant of the ever-changing society that we find ourselves in. It is also true that we are both big and small, so we're really big in comparison to some of those smaller liberal arts institutions across the country, but also really small in comparison to some of your really big national research institutions across the nation as well. We are also urban and open, so with us being urban, we are located in the beautiful city of Burlington. Uh, the downtown area is just about a 10 minute walk from campus, so students are able to enjoy shops and nightlife and restaurants uh, down in the, the downtown area there. Uh, when, we, uh, when we say that we are open, it means that our natural landscape is open. So we are framed by the Green and Adirondack Mountains. We sit right on Lake Champlain, which is the sixth largest freshwater lake in the United States. So we have very vast, sweeping, beautiful views of nature. And our students are so fortunate to be able to um, experience that on a daily basis. Now, experiential learning is a critical component to a UVM education. So our students are participating in internship opportunities, research opportunities, in addition to service learning opportunities to really complement that in-class lecture and in-class theory that they're learning in the classroom, right? So um, for example, we've got some internships, some recent internship opportunities that students have completed um, here on the right-hand side of the screen. This is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, we have a list of uh, hundreds of companies that students have interned with uh, in our career center, um, but all in all, about 98% of students um, don't graduate from the University of Vermont without completing some sort of experiential learning opportunity. So again, it is a really critical component of a UVM education. Okay, so a little bit about our housing system. All freshman students are required to live on campus for the first two years at the University of Vermont. And in their first year, they are required to live in a living and learning community. So um, these living and learning communities, what I like to say really allow students to kind of round out their interests in college. So um, say for example, if you are interested in studying business, but you're also really passionate about say sustainability as well, you can come to the University of Vermont study business, but also be living and learning with students who have that same shared interest and same shared passion uh, as uh, with sustainability as you do. So 
you'd be living and learning with those students. You all will be taking a one credit hour course together in the first semester, in addition to uh, doing activities around the Burlington area that center around sustainability as well. So again, we want you to hone in on that passion inside of the classroom, but also outside of the classroom as well. And the living and learning communities allow students to do just that. On my first slide, uh, there was a statistic that was there and it uh, showed the statistics between our in-state and out-of-state students. And we actually have a really high number of out-of-state students. Uh, Vermont is a really tiny state. So we do attract students from all across the country and really all over the world to study at the University of Vermont. So our living and learning communities not only help students to round out that passion, but also create a feeling of home away from home and really encourage students to create that community and that sense of camaraderie right off the bat as well. All right, so this is my last slide here, wrapping up with some nuts and bolts information about our admission process. I'll start at the top left-hand side of the screen. We do utilize a holistic approach in our um, review of applicants. So I like to tell students that you are more than your test scores, you are more than your grade point average. We like to know who you are as a student um, to determine if you would be a strong fit for the University of Vermont. So average GPA we, student, we see from students hovers around a 3.7, 3.8. Um, we've definitely seen higher than that and a little bit lower than that as well um, on, on our spectrum from applicants. We are test optional for this year and next year as well. Um, I want to reiterate, if you do not choose to submit your test scores throughout the admissions process, you will be penalized in no way for that. You'll still be considered for merit-based scholarships in addition to our honors college as well, um, whether you choose to submit those test scores or not. Uh, lastly here um, with our merit-based scholarships, 87% of undergrads do receive some sort of scholarship or financial aid from UVM. So, um, Out-of-state scholarships are going to range from $8,000 and going upwards into $20,000 per year. So uh, that concludes my presentation uh, for this evening. I will put my contact information in the chat, uh, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we will have the Catholic University of America. Thank you. Hold on one moment while I share my screen. Awesome. So hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Pierce. Um, I am one of our um, associate deans of admission at the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. Um, and you'll all be working with Kimberly Clark, um, my colleague, um, throughout the admission process. She is based um, in Chicago. So just a little bit about Catholic U by the numbers. We have about 3,100 undergraduate students. Um, of course, being the Catholic University of America, a lot of our students are Catholic. About 80% of them are. But we're welcome to everyone. You don't have to be Catholic to attend. We're all about meeting you where you are at in your faith, whether you are Catholic or whether you're not Catholic. We have about 27% diversity, 34 on-campus research centers. Our average class size is 19 students, and we're really fortunate that we have a beautiful 176-acre campus right in Washington, D.C. Um, we have a lot where you can get involved on campus. Our students get very, very involved um, outside of the classroom in addition to all that they do inside the classroom. There's over 100 different clubs and organizations ranging from academic clubs, cultural clubs, to student interest clubs. And in addition to that, we have 25 Division III sports teams. There's nine club teams and 16 intramural teams along with two fitness centers. So you can get as involved with athletics as you choose to. Um, and we also have about 40 to 50 events um, held weekly, um, which also so include a significant amount of service opportunities. Um, just this past weekend, they had Capital Fest, which is a giant concert that they'll host um, right on campus, which is a lot of fun. Um, what's really great about Catholic, of course, is our DC location. So as I mentioned before, we have this own very large campus that you're able to call home, but we're located right on the red line um, and we're located in the Brookland area. So on the Metro, we're just three stops from Union Station where you can get off there. You can um, walk right to the Capitol from there. If you want to take a long walk, you can walk, walk along the whole National Mall. It's a really fun city to be in um, and take advantage of all that DC has to offer from the history, the culture, the music, the sports teams 
experience and of course the internship opportunities as well. Obviously, as you probably know, DC definitely has a lot of colleges, you know, in a fairly small city. Um, so it's nice it's a very student centered city um, and there's lots and lots of different opportunities. Something I always like to mention too for our students who are coming, um, you know, from a little bit further away is that the airport, DCA, Reagan National Airport is only 25 minutes away from campus via Metro. So it's super easy um, to get in and out of the city for major breaks, holidays, things like that. Um, we have a really phenomenal academic and career success office, and they're really going to work with you from before day one to make sure that you are all set not only with what you're looking to study, but also um, with, you know, helping you set up yourself for success um, for a life beyond um, Catholic as well. There are over 3,000 internship opportunities. Of course, our location only helps with that, but this is a list of just some of the many, many places that our students have interned. And what's great, too, is that within six months of graduating, 90% of our students are employed, they're continuing their education, um, or they're going into the service seminary or military. So lots of different options to help you meet those next steps. So when it comes to what you want to study at Catholic University, you have a lot of different options. We actually have 79 um, undergraduate programs um, split up between nine different schools. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities there. And I always like to mention to our students too, that you don't have to pick just one program. If you're interested in double majoring or minoring, um, and maybe those programs that you're interested in don't necessarily fall within the same school, that's okay. We encourage students you know, to take one major in one school and study something else in another school. You're absolutely able to do that. We want you to take advantage of all the different opportunities that there are to learn here at Catholic. Um, when we're looking at your application, we do recalculate every GPA that crosses our desk on an unweighted 4.0 scale, but we put the weight back in into what we call strength of curriculum. So we take a very holistic approach um, for all of our students. We are test blind. So what that means is we are not looking at test scores or considering them for any part of the admission process or the scholarship um, process as well. But we're looking at who you are, of course, inside the classroom with you know, your transcripts, but then also who you are outside the classroom. You know, if you're activities, your service, your leadership. What's also great is that you're automatically considered for a university honors program, so there's no separate application for that. Our early action deadline is coming up um, on November 1st, and we'll also have regular decision on um, January 15th. You're automatically considered for merit scholarships, and those are determined based on your academic performance. They range from fifteen dollars to $32,000 each year, and those are renewable for all four years. We have two additional scholarships, the Parish Scholarship and the Legacy Grant, where if applicable, you will um, fill out the necessary information for those on the common application. The Parish Scholarship is if you belong to a Catholic parish, we just ask for that information, and the Legacy Grant is if a parent, sibling, or grandparent attended. Um, those are both also renewable for all four years and if you are eligible for one or both of those they do stack on top of your merit scholarship as well and we do have a handful of um, full tuition scholarships that our students are also eligible for too um, they'll be nominated for those and you'll find out after you receive your admission decision um, if you um, are invited to come and interview for those and again I always like to stress that there's no separate application um, for your scholarship information so for next steps, we definitely encourage you to connect with us. Um, Kimberly, your counselor that you'll be working with will be um, at your high school, either virtually or in person throughout the fall. Um, and we also have lots of opportunities to interview with us again, either in person or virtually, whatever you're most comfortable with. Follow us on the socials. Our students do a lot of takeovers. You can see what a day-to-day -day, um, life is for them at Catholic. And then we also will have a virtual open house as well as our second in-person open house on October 23rd. Um, so that's a little bit of information about Catholic University. Um, I will put Kimberly's contact information in the chat so you all have that information um, and definitely feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll have Cooper Union. Hi everyone. Okay. Uh, can you see the screen okay? Okay, great. So hi everybody, my name is Fatima Dalal and I am the Director of Admissions with the School of Engineering uh, for the Cooper Union and thanks for joining us this evening. So the Cooper Union was founded in 1859 in New York uh, by Peter Cooper, uh, who had a strong commitment to social justice. So the school has hosted visionaries such as Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, and Susan B. Anthony, 
who all gave speeches at the university. It was also where the NAACP launched, where the women's suffragette movement launched, as well as the American Red Cross. Uh, they all began at the Great Hall of Cooper Union, and to this day, we continue to host visionaries on campus. So as I mentioned before, we are located in New York City. Oops, excuse me. Um, we're looking in the heart of New York City, the East Village, which is actually no bias here, uh, my favorite neighborhood. So the building on the left uh, houses our engineering school. In the center is the foundation building, which is actually where the Great Hall is located, as well as our galleries, libraries, and our School of Art and Architecture. And uh, on the right is actually our residence hall for first year students. It's about a five minute walk, three minute walk, <laughs> three minute walk if you walk like a New Yorker from our other two um, buildings, which is essentially our campus. So there is a lot that makes Cooper a really extraordinary place and um, particularly a unique place. We have 850 students across our three programs in art, architecture, and engineering. So this year we had about 70 incoming students in art, 25 in architecture, and 135 in engineering. So that size really allows you to get your know your classmates and faculty well, you will have lifelong relationships with them. We have a faculty ratio of eight to one and classes rarely exceed 30, uh, 30 students, but more often than not, they're much smaller. And there is an emphasis on hands-on, experiential and interdisciplinary learning. At Cooper, we learn by doing, and we apply that education towards social impact, which is embedded in our curriculum, our community and our values. So I'll start with the School of Architecture, which is a five-year NAV accredited Bachelor of Architecture degree, which is a degree you need to become a licensed architect. So students from all five years of the program work side by side in an open studio pictured here, um, exploring drawing, model making, and design development along with digital tech. So we use a studio-based curriculum which allows for rigorous critique and debate. So the School of Art offers a four-year degree in the fine art. There are no majors at the art school, so you will train to be a holistic, well-rounded artist working in a multiple areas of study. Um, all students take foundation courses across the disciplines in their first year. So we offer coursework in drawing, painting, printmaking, film, video, graphic design, and performance. This provides you with different perspectives and experimentation across disciplines and mediums. And students in their sophomore year and beyond are given dedicated studio space, which is not uh, no small feat in New York City. So. For the engineering school, we offer degrees in five areas, civil, chemical, electrical, mechanical, and general engineering. And again, the focus is on challenging, hands-on project-based learning experience. And you start as soon as your first semester with our class in engineering design and problem solving, where students work together on projects that benefit society. So examples from last year include reimagining waste as a source of energy or designing rain gardens in the city or refugee and flight shelter kits or developing automated robots. Uh, students also have the opportunity to pursue research as early as their first year and pursue a minor in computer science, humanities, and uh, math, and most recently, bioengineering. So uh, Cooper Union also has a wide range of labs that are available, um, from anything from concrete mixing to a maker space to a biomed lab to an anechoic chamber, and to our most recent addition, which is the art architecture, construction, and engineering lab, where students from all three schools work together uh, by using a suite of digital fabrication tools. So what's life like at the Cooper Union? Well, first off, I gotta say, it's great to be a student in New York City. So students take full advantage of our location and use the city as an extension of their campus, of our campus. So from exploring all the music and museums and restaurants to working with our career center, um, and our network to pursue internships and research during their time at Cooper, or even for looking for options and working closely with the Career Center for postgraduate opportunities. We offer over 80 clubs, everything from my personal favorite to Cheese Cult, to acapella groups and jazz bands, uh, to competitive organizations such as Formula SAE and Hyperloop. And if you're thinking about housing, we offer housing at our residence hall to uh, freshman students. So financial aid is, um, at Cooper, affordability is a serious priority. And so off the bat, every admitted student immediately receives a 22,275 scholarship, which is guaranteed for all four or five years of your education. Students also receive additional merit awards and named scholarships, um, as well as opportunities for work study. 
Um, so last year, um, we were able to meet demonstrated need for all of our um, admitted students and the average cost of attendance, so the average cost um, was $15,000. So our application requirements are that we are a common app school. I'm going to reiterate what, reiterate what some of my colleagues have said here. We really um, it does, uh, do not submit the SAT or ACT if you don't want to. It will not impact your application or your decision. Uh, we require transcripts, letters of recommendations, and each of the engineering schools has supplementary materials as well. So for the engineering school, just um, three uh, essay questions uh, that are on the common app and for the architecture and art schools, uh, there is, once you submit the application, you'll receive a home test, which is an additional um, part of the application that you have to complete. Um, lastly, stay in touch with us. Um, attend a virtual information session. That's the best way to learn about us. And email us anytime at, at admissions at cooper.edu. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Our next presenter will be the University of Maryland. Thank you so much and welcome. Yeah, I just um, put my name, but I'll put all my contact info after I uh, start presenting or after I'm done presenting. But I think that's a good time to just say, please feel free to use the chat or use the Q&A to ask any of us questions. I know we're all sitting back here waiting to answer your questions. So feel free to uh, use the Q&A as questions come up throughout our presentation. So without, without further ado, my name is Robert Oliveri. I'm the Midwest Regional Recruitment Coordinator for the University of Maryland. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the school. As far as numbers, we have 30,000 plus undergraduate students. So we're a large Big Ten University. And what that means is that it's a large campus, over 800 student organizations. And when you see college and the TV and the movies and media and see a large campus, that true traditional college feel, you think of or see the University of Maryland. So that's what you're really strongly looking at when you're looking at our university. Now, outside of that, we're only four miles from Washington, DC. And we'll talk about that in a second here. But you can also see some other facts. We have 43.6% of our student population that identifies as students of color. And we celebrate diversity at the University of Maryland because we know that the more you learn from people that look at things from a different perspective than your own, the more you're gonna learn, the more you're gonna be innovative, and the more you're gonna be well-rounded and prepared for the real world. So that's something we really push and promote throughout um, our four year, your four years at Maryland and throughout our university. Um, going back to our location, we are in College Park, Maryland. So that's the perfect small college town, but we're only four miles from Washington, DC. You can see it attracts a lot of major cities for our students to study abroad in, recruitment markets, and then of course the nation's capital being so close. We're only four miles away, so you can take the major green line right into Washington, DC. So it's 25 minutes from our campus to the White House steps. And students can have a full-time uh, or be a full-time student at the University of Maryland while having an internship in DC. I think it's important to note that all programs benefit from being so close to Washington, DC, not just public policy or politics and government. We have Every single major industry in the United States has a department related to it in Washington, DC. So it's a phenomenal opportunity to be hands-on and get outside the classroom. 83% of our students have at least one internship, 55% have two or more. So over half of our students have two or more internships and maybe it's in our number one nationally ranked criminal justice program, working at the FBI and CIA headquarters. Maybe it's in aerospace engineering, working at NASA. Maybe it's in ag, working at the USDA, but the options are really endless with DC being cl so close. We are wedged right in between DC and Baltimore. So we're only about 45 minutes away from Baltimore as well. So we have a lot of hospitals and medical districts in the Baltimore area, as well as uh, one of our alum, Kevin Plank, the CEO of Under Armour, his headquarters are in Baltimore. So lots of opportunities between both major markets. Now talking about that, all of our programs are phenomenal because of those out of the classroom experiences. And this is a list of all of the different colleges that we have available. At the bottom, you'll notice letters and sciences. And basically what that is, is if you apply to one of these programs and you do not get admitted directly into the program, you go into letters and sciences. 
or if you apply undecided, you go into letters and sciences. Then in the red box there, lep.umd.edu, that's the site where you can figure out all the logistics to do an internal transfer after your freshman year. So this is the important piece. You can get a direct entry as a freshman, or if you're in a limited enrollment program, you may get the direct entry or you may do a year of coursework and then get your spot in that program. But just because you don't get the direct entry as a freshman does not mean you cannot be a student in that major at the University of Maryland. Now we have lots of out of the classroom opportunities. I've already talked about internships. We have over $500 million in research. We have double the national average in study abroad. And we have phenomenal living learning programs between honors college, research-based, service-based, where you get to take general education courses and live with people of the same interest as you. All of this is listed on our website. So I highly, highly recommend go to our website, do research on our research, do research on our programs, and then reach back out to me with questions or if you're looking for something and you can't find it. Switching gears over to our application process, we are a dual application school, so Common App or Coalition, no preference either way. Take a picture of this. These are all the things we need. So the application form, two layers of rec, activities list, essay, official transcripts. We are test optional, but if you're choosing to submit your test, you will self-report, but you'll also send the test, official test scores from the testing agency. Same with the transcripts. You'll self-report, but your high school will also send us your transcripts. At the bottom, you'll see TERP application portal. Once you complete your application on Common App or Coalition, then you will go in, complete the TERP application portal, and you can have live updates of how your application status is looking and what else you are um, needing from us. This is what we review on at the University of Maryland. So you can see all of the different factors. Notice test scores are on there, ranking class is on there. Those are things that may or may not apply to your application. If they don't, it won't hinder you. If they do, we'll add them into our, our review of you. We also don't track demonstrated interest. So we are just looking at you as a student academically. And I love speaking to students, happy to help them, but that does not mean I need um, to talk to you to improve your application. And then finally, the most important thing to remember is November 1st is our early action deadline. It is non-binding and it's priority consideration for merit-based scholarships, special programs, so your honors college and the best admissions offer. All in one application, just apply before November 1st and you are set to go, check all your updates and email and then reach out to me, I'll put my email in there or go ahead and use that Q&A feature. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Next, we will have Sacred Heart University. Hi there, everyone, and thank you, Christy. I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. My name is Kim Perrette, and i um, so happy to be talking tonight with all of the great Illinois students. Um, one of my favorite places is Chicago. Um, I'm here to talk to you this evening about Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, there's my information there, but I'll also put it in the chat afterwards as well. Um, if you don't know where Fairfield, Connecticut is, we are about an hour and 20 minutes outside of New York City and about two hours from Boston. So it's a perfect location to have this beautiful suburban campus, but also be close to some uh, really major awesome cities. I uh, just want to talk a few little facts about Sacred Heart. Um, we are uh, the first Catholic university founded by lay people, which basically uh, means not nuns and priests. So that's why we're called the pioneers. Um, we are a top 10 university for community service. Our students love to give back to the community and a top 10 for happiest students. So it really is a great university to attend. We are the second largest Catholic university in New England. Our our undergrad enrollment is about 6,000 and total with our grad students about 9,000. I want to talk a little bit about academics. Um, we do have five colleges of study at Sacred Heart. We have our College of Arts and Sciences, which includes the uh, communication, media, and arts, and social work. We have College of Education, our College of Business and Technology, which does include computer our College of Nursing and our College of Health Professions. So we have over 80 majors and a lot of still deciding options as well. We have some master's and doctorate programs, which uh, as a freshman, you can be pre-admitted to. So if you really wanna know what, if you want to 
continue your education in our grad programs, um, you can have that plan from the very beginning. Uh, we do offer campuses in Ireland and Luxembourg, as well as about 30 other countries that you can study abroad in. Our average class size is about 21. So I wanna talk just a minute briefly about our College of Health Professions, which is uh, really popular at Sacred Heart. Uh, these are our undergrad health uh, professions programs there, but um, these are the programs I was talking about that you may be pre-admitted to. So uh, our doctorate program in physical therapy is very popular as well as athletic training masters. Um, we have physician's assistant as well. So you can see uh, the list there that healthcare is uh, one of our main priorities along with our nursing major. Um, it's super important for all students to get involved in extracurricular activities. Um, studies have shown that students are just better well-rounded and better students. They do better in the classroom if they um, do a lot extracurricularly too. So you have to do something else besides just study. So we have plenty of clubs and organizations for you to be involved in. We are a very athletic university. We have over 33 division one teams, over 35 club sports. Um, so we have a lot of school spirit at Sacred Heart. And performing arts is a big area as well. And we do offer scholarships for performing arts like band orchestra guard, choral, dance, theater, arts. We have a large uh, campus ministry program as well. And we've just opened our new uh, diversity and inclusion center too. So plenty to do outside of the classroom. Um, regarding living at Sacred Heart, uh, we are a growing university, um, one of the fastest growing in the U.S. right now. We have just added five new residence halls, and they're absolutely beautiful. You can see this picture right here. Um, very pretty new buildings. We are able to house all of our students all four years now, um, but you must live in, in a residence hall at least two years, um, unless you have relatives um, around town. Um, we have tons of virtual uh, tours on our website, also on YouTube. Um, please take a look at these if you're interested in Sacred Heart, they're absolutely great. And uh, our West Campus, we've added this a few years ago, and this is where our uh, College of Business and Education is located. It was the former headquarters of General Electric, and you can see these two buildings here, uh, state-of-the-art classrooms, just absolutely gorgeous. And this is a little hotel right here that kind of goes underground. It's very, very cool. Um, some things about our application deadlines here we do have an early decision december 1st our early action deadline is a little bit later than most i think uh, you've heard on this session so far it's december 15th and uh, we have an early action two of february 1st we do use the common application we need a transcript a letter of recommendation um, highly recommended is an interview with an admissions rep so that would be me if you're living in illinois uh, we are a test optional school and have been for many years and uh, doesn't matter about um, um, uh, scholarships uh, either. So you don't need a test score. Our average GPA for non-nursing students is 3.4 and average for nursing is around 3.7. Uh, we do offer merit scholarships. Grants are available through performing arts by audition. We have a community service grant. And also we do require the FAFSA and CSS profile for federal and institutional aid. And you can obviously do that by October 1. And that is it for me. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Next we'll have Salve Regina University. Thank you so much, Christy. I'm going to go ahead and drop my information in the chat for everybody. Um, my name is Stephanie Dupuy, and I'm one of our associate deans of undergraduate admission at Salve Regina University. I'm also a proud graduate um, of the class of 2004 when I studied education um, with a double major in theater and minor in English literature. I now recruit the state of Illinois, and thank you for being with us this evening. We always start talking about Salve with um, 
our founding. The Sisters of Mercy were a group of nuns from Dublin, Ireland, and um, they were known as the walking nuns because they didn't live in a cloistered environment. They were out in the community working in healthcare and education and social work, um, living amongst the people in the communities that needed them most. And when the sisters traveled to the United States and began opening hospitals and um, institutions of education, they founded this uh, Salva Regina University with the hope that they would educate young women to go into the fields of nursing, education, and social work. Um, you'll notice here our, our mission of the university to work for a world that is harmonious, just, and merciful. This is incredibly important to us. And there's many opportunities to delve deeply into the five critical concerns of mercy, which you can see listed here. Since the school was founded, we've obviously grown and changed quite a bit. Selby now has 2,100 undergraduate students living on our campus in beautiful Newport, Rhode Island. Um, we're about 40 minutes south of Providence, a little over an hour south of Boston. And I love traveling back and forth to the Chicago area. Um, I'll be out there next week. I was there when the country shut down due to COVID. And um, I spend lots of time in the Chicago area working with students and look forward to connecting with you. As you'll see, only 85% of our students are from in-state. So our students are coming from all over the country and internationally. And our student population is representative of 41 states and 21 nations. Here's a listing of all of Salve's undergraduate programs. We are a liberal arts university with about 50 different undergraduate majors. Some of our larger majors are in business and nursing education, psychology, biology, and the biomedical sciences, administration of justice, which is our criminal justice program. Um, but your educational experience is also founded in the liberal arts. There is some flexibility um, in your course of study. You can take courses in your major from the very get-go when you get to campus and spread those liberal arts classes throughout the four years. Or if you're undeclared, which is, is very common, um, you can really delve through the liberal arts core curriculum before making Making a decision about what you're going to study. This photo here is actually a picture of um, the cornerstone of our campus. It's an old Gilded Age mansion that was donated by a family to the Diocese of Providence. It's where the first class of women and nuns that were teaching at Salve lived and learned. It's now where admissions office is. So if you were to visit campus, this is where you would come and see us right on the cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Here's some examples of some of our classrooms. One of the things I liked best about Salve is the fact that classes are small. Our student to teacher ratio is 13 to one and it's an average class size of 18. This makes for a really hands-on experiential learning opportunity. Our students are literally getting their hands dirty as seen in the photo on the right with our students in the cultural and historic preservation program. Uh, but in areas of the sciences and the performing arts, this is so critical to the experience that students have in our classrooms. Jumping next to student life, we do offer housing for students freshmen through senior year and guarantee and require housing freshmen through junior year with the opportunity to live on campus as a senior as well. We're currently in the process of building some new residence halls so that we can provide housing for everyone if they're interested. Um, we do have over 80 clubs and organizations, NCAA Division Three for athletics and there are 20 varsity sports. And if you've never, visited Newport, Rhode Island before. It is a city filled with so many recreational and cultural opportunities. It's a city steeped in history and a place that our students truly live and learn um, and grow both inside of the classroom and outside of the classroom. The vision and mission of the Sisters of Mercy makes it so that many of our clubs and organizations are devoted to community service and getting involved with um, what's happening in the community and providing opportunities to give back some additional photos of some student life opportunities. Lastly, jumping to the application, um, we do offer early decision, early action one, two, and regular decision. All of our students who are applying to the nursing program because it is a direct entry program must apply by the November 1st deadline. Students who apply early action one and early decision will hear um, admissions decisions back from Salve um, it, by the end of December. F uh, March one is our FAFSA priority deadline. 
the things that we're looking for when you're applying um, are your Common App and most importantly, your high school transcript. We'll look at what classes you're taking, how you've challenged yourself and how you've grown through the years. Um, we do that also through reading your letters of recommendation from teachers and counselors that share a little bit about what, what it is that may have challenged you through the years, how you balanced your schoolwork with all of the other wonderful activities that you're participating in. Salve has been test optional for quite a long time. Um, and the whether or not you submit test scores does not impact your um, scholarships or opportunities for our honors program program or financial aid. Um, we do break down the, um, uh, the average GPA and SAT scores by our overall class and also um, for nursing because that is the direct entry program. So it is a little bit more rigorous to get in. Almost all of our students have scholarships and receive need-based financial aid. We do review for merit scholarship um, when students apply and the range goes up to $25,000 a year, renewable each year as long as a student keeps a 3.0 while they're on campus. I'm gonna put information in the chat about visiting, but we have been open for visitors and have plenty of tours and open houses available. We also still are offering lots of virtual opportunities for you to connect with us. And I'd be more than happy to connect with you over a Zoom to meet one-on-one -on -one if you wanna learn more. Thank you so much for having us and best of luck as you begin your college search and begin applying to colleges. Thank you, everyone. If you would like to turn your camera on as we move into the Q&A section of our presentation tonight, our first question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And if you could answer in the order that you presented, thank you. Absolutely, yes, I, I guess I'm up first. <laughs> um, Yes, I would uh, tell students that, you know, uh, just to follow your heart, you know, you're going to be hearing a lot of um, advice, a lot of input from your peers, from your instructors, from your parents, from family members, but just remember that this is your process and that, um, you know, you do have a little voice that speaks inside that tells you, you know, um, what's right and, uh, you know, in the way to follow your heart. So just go with your, your gut instincts throughout this entire process. Hard to follow up with that. Um, thanks, Ashley. Um, I would say also definitely make sure that you um, keep a spreadsheet or some way of however you wanna stay organized every school, I mean, I think we all have different deadlines, as you can see just from us. So when you're applying to 10 to 12 to 15 schools, it does get a little bit overwhelming. So just keep a list of the deadlines, especially for not only admission, but also scholarships and aid as well, just because you don't want to miss a deadline. Sometimes a missed deadline is a missed opportunity. It can be tens of thousands of dollars that you miss out on a scholarship. So staying organized can definitely help as well. Sure. Um, my advice would be that as you narrow down your college search, um, check with the admissions office, check with the website, but see if you can connect with a current student. Um, I find that they might be able to give, uh, give you answers to questions um, that you really want to know um, and can give you a general sense of uh, just a more information about the school that'd be really important to you as you continue your search. That's mine. This is a great question. For me, I already said during my presentation, but I'll really hit home is doing research on your research, right? So researching the school, understanding what faculty are doing, looking at their research projects, looking at their internship opportunities. I know at University of Maryland, as at most schools, the colleges will list out all of this information. So kind of figure out what your trajectory would look like at the schools, those top schools that you're interested in, and make sure they align with what you're thinking is what your postgraduate life would look like. All right, these are all great, uh, great ideas. Um, I would say one thing that's really important for students to do is connect with your high school counselor. Um, it's their job to help you and to give you advice and sort of lead you. Um, the college search process can be really overwhelming and, um, and you can use their help. So uh, that's what they're there for. 
I'm going to stress visiting campuses. Um, I know it's been really challenging, but there's been a lot of opportunities to visit both virtually and in person. But I do think it's important to step foot on a campus, to talk to students, have those real authentic conversations with students and faculty, and also spend some time getting to know the area um, that the colleges that you're looking at are in. Um, the surrounding community of the colleges that you're looking at are going to be your new home away from home and um, such an important part to your um, experience. So definitely visit and get to know the area. I would just like to thank everyone for joining us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five minute survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to, to check back uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Thank you, everyone.